Understanding how bread's ingredients work can take the stress out of baking. The most unfamiliar ingredient you'll see in any bread recipe is yeast. Yeast is a living, single-celled organism that causes dough to rise. Dough must rise in order to have the fluffy quality people expect in bread. Here's how yeast works. Any recipe that calls for a packet of dry active yeast will also include about a tablespoon of sugar and warm water. Every packet of yeast contains hundreds of billions of living yeast cells that have to be activated. Think of it as billions of teeny tiny sleeping monsters. You wake up these monsters by throwing them into warm water. The water can't be too cold or it won't wake them up, but it can't be too hot, you'll boil them to death. Once you wake up the yeast, the tiny monsters start gobbling up that spoonful of sugar. When they eat the sugar, they burp up carbon dioxide, CO2. This process is called fermentation. Take a look at the yeast now. You see all that foam? What you're seeing is the CO2. After I wake up the yeast, I add in the binding ingredients, oil, sugar, and eggs. These ingredients help keep everything together and add flavor. Now it's time to add in the flour. Pay attention to what happens as I stir. Did you notice how the mixture transformed from a liquid to a thick dough? This transformation was caused by a chemical reaction that occurs when flour mixes with water. The proteins in the flour begin to form into gluten. If you were to zoom in on gluten, it would look like thin, loosely woven threads. What happens when you weave gluten threads more tightly together? They become stronger and less penetrable. This process of weaving gluten is called kneading. Kneading is a crucial step in getting the dough ready for the oven. You knead by twisting, stretching, pulling, and pounding the dough. But why is it so important for the gluten to be strong and impenetrable? Remember the CO2 being excreted by the little yeast monsters? Gluten traps that CO2, so the stronger the gluten is, the better it will be at trapping it. If you only spent five minutes kneading your dough, it wouldn't be able to rise as high. After you're done kneading, it's time to put the dough in a warm place to keep those hungry yeast monsters awake. Your dough doesn't move, but there's a lot happening inside of it. The yeast continues to eat sugar and release CO2 that becomes trapped by your strongly woven gluten. After about two hours, your dough will double in size ready to be shaped and placed in the oven. There you have it. Now that you know how yeast works, baking bread isn't so scary, is it?